Hi everyone, this lesson is on the risks and complications of wearing contact lenses. So we're going to talk about seven different eye conditions that can occur in contact lens users. Before we talk about those seven different conditions, let's talk about what contact lenses are and the different types of contact lenses. So contact lenses are artificial optical correction devices that are placed on the cornea of the eye. So the cornea of the eye is the thin transparent layer that covers the iris and the pupil and they are optical correction devices, a fancy way of saying they are used to treat different eye conditions. And there are actually many indications for their use, including myopia, which would be nearsightedness. Many patients are going to use them for this purpose. We can also see it with anisometropia, so if there's difference in visual ability between one eye and the other eye, one contact lens may be used in that circumstance. Some other conditions that contact lenses are used for include keratoconus, astigmatism. Some can be used therapeutically, others can be used for iris pathologies, and some can be used for cosmetic purposes. So if patients want to have different colored irises, they may use contact lenses simply for cosmetic reasons. Now in general, there are two types of contact lenses. One of them is known as soft contact lenses or hydrophilic lenses. And the second is known as rigid gas permeable lenses or RGPs. So these are going to be important when we talk about some of the risk factors for certain eye conditions that are related to contact lens use. Now contact lens use has become more prevalent in recent decades and the issues caused by contact lenses is actually quite common. So these issues are becoming more and more common as more and more people use contact lenses. And the most common issue with contact lens use is actually contact lens discomfort. So this is simply the discomfort or unpleasant sensation of having the contact lens in the eye. The next upcoming slides are going to be discussing different eye conditions that can occur with contact lens use. Now let's talk about those seven different eye conditions. We're not going to talk about them in any particular order. The first one is going to be known as giant papillary conjunctivitis. So giant papillary conjunctivitis is also known as contact lens induced papillary conjunctivitis. So it is conjunctivitis, meaning that it is inflammation of the conjunctiva of the eyes. So the conjunctiva is a thin transparent layer that covers the whites of the eyes. And in this condition, it becomes inflamed. This condition is believed to be due to an immune reaction to mucus debris on contact lenses. And it is one of the most common adverse effects that occurs in contact lens users. And it may occur in up to 40 to 50% of users at some point in their contact lens use. So some of the risk factors for getting this condition include the following. Excessive contact lens use. So wearing contact lenses for prolonged periods of time. So prolonged wearing time. So this could be where a patient wears contact lenses for a very long time before changing and cleaning the lens. Or if they're using old or expired lenses, this can increase the risk as well. And certain lenses can also increase the risk for this particular condition. And some of these include silicone hydrogel lenses. And it's more likely to occur in soft lenses versus those rigid gas permeable lenses we talked about before. So what are the signs and symptoms of this condition? So one of them is going to be eye redness. This is conjunctivitis. So we're going to see an inflammation of the conjunctiva. So it's going to be a red eye. And another term for this is conjunctival hyperemia. So there's increased redness in the conjunctiva. We can also see tearing, itching of the eyes or irritation that can feel a bit burning sensation in some cases. Patients may also have issues with lens intolerance. So the contact lens can feel even more uncomfortable than usual. And there may be increased lens movement. So patients may describe feeling like the lens is moving around on their eye more than usual. And they may or may not have pain with this condition. There are other types of conjunctivitis conditions that can occur in contact lens users like superior limbic keratoconjunctivitis, but this is going to be by far the most common type of conjunctivitis that can occur. The next condition we're going to talk about is bacterial or microbial keratitis. So microbial keratitis is a term used for any infective condition that causes keratitis or an inflammation of the cornea, but we're going to focus more on bacterial keratitis in this slide. So the first important point to make note of here is that this is a sight-threatening condition. So sight-threatening meaning that if this is not quickly diagnosed and treated properly, it can lead to vision loss in some patients. So again, very important to recognize this condition. It is a sight-threatening condition. So bacterial keratitis 
is caused by a bacterial infection, which results in inflammation of the cornea. So the cornea, again, is the thin layer that covers the iris and the pupil. And it can also lead to inflammation of the conjunctiva as well, conjunctivitis. So you can see in this image here, the conjunctiva is inflamed as well. In bacterial keratitis, the bacteria that most commonly cause this condition in contact lens users is going to be Staphylococcus aureus or Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Now, there are multiple risk factors for getting a bacterial keratitis or a microbial keratitis that don't relate to contact lens use. So patients that don't use contact lenses can also get this condition. But the risk factors I'm going to talk about here are only related to contact lens use. So the risk factors that are related to contact lens use that can increase the likelihood of getting this condition are the following. Excessive contact lens use, so prolonged wearing time. Again, if you're wearing your contact lenses for very, very long periods of time, or if you're using them past their expiry date, that's going to be a risk factor. Poor contact lens hygiene is also going to be a big risk factor here. If they're not properly cleaned, if the case that they're stored in is not cleaned or not exchanged for a new case frequently enough, often changing your case each month is going to be the best. That is also another risk factor for getting a bacterial or a microbial keratitis. And then sleeping with your contact lenses in is also another risk factor as well. So these are all important risk factors to make note of here. And then the signs and symptoms of a bacterial keratitis include the following. Eye redness. So we can see in this image here, there's eye redness. There can be eye pain. This is going to be important because a lot of conditions may or may not have pain, but this is often going to have eye pain. And then another very important one to make note of here is reduced vision or blurriness. Because the cornea is involved in this condition, it's inflamed, the light passes through the cornea to pass through the pupil in order for the patient to see. So if their cornea is inflamed, this can lead to issues with vision. There can be blurriness. There can also be photophobia or light sensitivity as well. And then there can be eye discharge in some cases where there is a white mucopurulent discharge. So the discharge can be pus-like in some cases. And then the complications of this condition, again, are blindness. So again, this is a sight-threatening condition. Perforation. So there can be perforation of the eye and there can be ulceration or corneal scarring of the eye as well. And another very important point to make note of with regards to this condition is that complications may occur rapidly in this type of keratitis and they can occur rapidly within 24 to 48 hours. So it's important again to quickly recognize and treat this condition. And then there are other types of microbial keratitis. Again, microbial keratitis means that it is a keratitis or an inflammation of the cornea due to an infective organism. We talked about bacterial keratitis here, but there are other types of microbial keratitis that can occur in contact lens wearers. And these include acanthamoeba keratitis and fungal keratitis. I want to briefly talk about acanthamoeba keratitis here because this is the one where it is an amoeba, which is a protozoa, that can come from water. So if, for instance, someone were to store their contact lenses in water instead of solution, this can be a cause of this condition, acanthamoeba keratitis. We can also see it with patients who wear their contact lenses when they're swimming. So those are a couple of important other risk factors for acanthamoeba keratitis. So these types of keratitis are often going to have very similar signs and symptoms, but there can be other findings as well. And oftentimes the signs and symptoms are going to be more severe. The next condition I'm going to talk about here is corneal neovascularization. So corneal neovascularization is formation of new blood vessels in the cornea. So neovascularization, neo meaning new, and vascularization referring to blood vessels. This neovascularization is due to inflammatory and or hypoxic injury to the cornea. So hypoxic injury meaning that there's not enough oxygen getting to the cornea. So the cornea is going to increase blood vessel formation to compensate to try to get enough oxygen to the cornea. This can occur in 1 to 20% of contact lens users. And the risk factors for getting this condition that are related to contact lens use are the following. Prolonged long-term use of contact lenses is going to be one of the most important risk factors here. So if you've worn contact lenses for many years, you're more likely to have corneal neovascularization. Another important risk factor is going to be using expired contacts. So wearing old or worn out contact lenses. So as those contact lenses get older, the permeability, the ability for oxygen to pass through them becomes impaired. So they're going to be more likely to increase the risk of corneal vascularization 
vascularization. Using certain contact lenses is another risk factor as well. Sleeping or napping with your contact lenses in is also another risk factor. So you can imagine that if you've got your eyes closed and the contact lens is covering the cornea, the cornea is not getting enough oxygen as it should. Improperly fitted contact lenses is another risk factor for this as well. And another risk factor is high myopia. So being very nearsighted or having an astigmatism may also be a risk factor. This seems to be likely due to the contact lenses correcting for these conditions. So certain lenses may be a bit thicker when they're trying to correct for these types of conditions. And the thicker lenses is going to impair oxygen delivery to the cornea. So that's going to increase the risk for corneal neovascularization. Now, there really aren't any signs or symptoms of corneal neovascularization. It's going to be asymptomatic. So it's going to be only detected in most cases by your optometrist. But in some cases, there may be some eye redness if there is a lot of neovascularization. Another condition that can occur in contact lens wearers is ptosis. So ptosis is a drooping of an eyelid. And ptosis can occur from contact lens use due to friction of a blinking eyelid against contact lens over long periods of time. So if you have a contact lens in your eye and you're blinking over that contact lens, if there's much friction, the eyelid can drag along the contact lens. And this can actually weaken some of the muscles that are responsible for holding up your eyelid. So this can actually cause ptosis because of it. And in fact, ptosis is 20 times more likely in contact lens users compared to non-contact lens users. Now, the risk factors for getting ptosis in contact lens users are the following. One of them is, again, going to be prolonged long-term use of contact lenses. So as you've used contact lenses for many, many years, the chances of getting ptosis is more likely to occur. So you can imagine that if you're blinking over contact lenses for very long periods of time, there are chances that some of the muscles become weaker due to friction from blinking your eyelid over the contact lens for long periods of time. So that is going to be another important risk factor here. Another risk factor is using contacts with dry eyes. So this could be with old contact lenses or expired contact lenses, or if the eyes are dry for some other reason. So again, that would lead to increased friction of a blinking eyelid over that contact lens. And then the third risk factor is going to be using rigid gas permeable lenses as opposed to those soft contact lenses we talked about before. So the signs and symptoms of ptosis are again a drooping eyelid. This may be unilateral, maybe only on one side, or it can be bilateral. Both eyes may be affected. And then another condition that can occur with contact lens use is a pinguecula. So this is what a pinguecula looks like. A pinguecula is a yellow brown nodule on the surface of the eye. It's located on more specifically the bulbar conjunctiva. And a pinguecula may occur in up to 20% of contact lens wearers. So pinguecula's can occur in people in the general population who have never worn a contact lens, but contact lens users are more likely to have these. So the risk factors related to contact lens use that can increase the likelihood of getting a pinguecula are the following prolonged long-term use of contact lenses. So again, this is a common theme. We see prolonged contact lens use being a risk factor for many of these conditions, and pinguecula is another one. And another risk factor is using RGP lenses as opposed to soft contact lenses. So again, there are more risk factors for getting pinguecula, but these are two that are related to contact lens use. And what are some of the signs and symptoms of a pinguecula? So it's often going to just be the presence of a pinguecula. So it's going to be a presence of a yellow brown raised nodule. And in patients who use contact lenses, it may cause issue with contact lens fitting or use depending on how close the pinguecula is to the cornea. So if it's very close to the cornea, there may be some issue with the contact lens coming into contact with the pinguecula and leading to issues with fitting. Another condition that can occur in contact lens users is corneal abrasion. So corneal abrasion is going to be a disruption or injury to the cornea of the eye. So it's going to be a scratched or an epithelial injury to the cornea. And the risk factors that can occur in contact lens users include the following. Wearing damaged contact lenses. So if you're wearing a contact lens that has a chip in it or if it's cracked and you still are wearing it and it's over the cornea, it can lead to injury to the cornea can lead to a disruption or damage to the cornea. Another risk factor is again prolonged lens use. And another possible risk factor in contact lens users is rubbing your eyes when wearing the contact lenses. So it may not occur, but it may occur if the eyes are very dry. So you can imagine that if your eyes are very, very dry and you have a contact lens in and you start rubbing, that contact lens may 
lead to a disruption or an injury to the cornea. So that would be a corneal abrasion. Some of the signs and symptoms of a corneal abrasion include the following. Eye redness, eye pain, tearing, photophobia or light sensitivity, a foreign body sensation. So there can feel like there's grit or sand in the eye. A headache can also occur and difficulty opening eyes can occur as well. This can be related to the light sensitivity. And then there can be some complications from this, including ulceration and infection. And the last condition that we're going to talk about that can occur in contact lens users is what is known as superficial punctate keratitis. So superficial punctate keratitis is a chronic bilateral condition that recurs and relapses for months to years. So it involves multiple white-gray intraepithelial corneal lesions, and it leads to, again, a keratitis, which would be an inflammation of the cornea. And the risk factors related to contact lens use are again going to be prolonged long-term use of contact lenses. This is going to be a very important risk factor for this condition. And then having dry eyes is also going to be another risk factor. So if the contact lenses again are old or expired and they're more likely to be dried out, this can increase the risk for this condition. And what are some of the signs and symptoms of this condition? Some of the signs and symptoms include tearing, photophobia or light sensitivity, burning sensation, a foreign body sensation, again feeling like there's sand or some gritty sensation in the eye, mild vision reduction. So mild vision reduction, there may be a bit of blurriness, especially if there's a flare-up or if there's active disease, this can also be something that can be found as well. So those are different eye conditions that can occur in contact lens users. We didn't talk about all the different conditions that can occur, but those are some of the more common and more important ones to think about. If you want to learn more about other eye conditions, please check my ophthalmology playlist. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thanks so much for watching and I hope to see you next time.